I want you to do one thing. If you succeed, you will get this golden goose. Whatever it takes, however it takes. There was once a pink elephant. Make sure that you do not think about the color of the pink elephant. Do not think about what it looks like. In fact, do not even think about the color pink. And definitely do not think about the elephant. It's hard, right? But if you manage to succeed, here is your golden goose. A pink elephant doesn't exist. There are no sightings of a naturally born pink elephant. But yet our mind conjures images. Maybe taking reference from a cartoon or some TV show. On its own, the image might fade into the forgotten corners of our mind. But when told to actively resist thinking about it, it's not so easy anymore. Remarkably, even while speaking right now, the image is swirling in my mind. What you resist persists. A long time ago, a Swiss psychiatrist by the name of Carl Jung made this very point. For those of us who do not know Carl Jung, he was a pioneer in the field of psychiatry, psychotherapy and philosophy. Much like his once psychoanalytic mentor Sigmund Freud. The two had had a falling out, like many pioneers of the same academic sphere do. But that might be the context for another video. What you resist not only persists, but will grow in size. Sources say that this was the true quote in its metaphoric flesh. Today, this idea is sometimes shortened to what you resist persists. Sadly, not unlike many other quotes, this thought has been misinterpreted. It is very important to understand the context of Jung before jumping to hasty conclusions about what he really meant. Imagine that, as a profession, you are trying to help people get over their demons. In fact, not only theirs, but others as well. You see a recurrent thought appearing in many of these people. You see a fixation on trying to get over issues. These people keep actively trying to escape their demons, only to end up back where they all started. The more they try to look away, the more they are aware of its presence. Quite like the proverbial elephant in the room. And the more they look away from reality, whether it be ultimately good or bad, the more they are entrenched in it. There seems to be no escape. And soon, generally healthy people start to lose themselves to the sphere of not escaping reality. They lose the feeling that they have control over their lives. And they start on a downward spiral. Imagine being able to see that through an inquisitive but very caring mind. And that pretty much sums up about half of how Jung came to this conclusion. Most individuals are unaware of how much energy they devote to something they don't desire. When you tell a buddy about a terrible scenario, you're pouring passion into something you don't desire. If you respond adversely to an incident by saying, it is awful, you are pouring passion into something you don't desire. As a result, whatever you vehemently oppose, you are in reality attracting it to yourself. It is that simple. Even if we just think about the phrase elephant in the room, we can see obvious parallels with what Jung said. An important detail which is being purposefully overlooked by everyone around. But it sticks out. It doesn't go away. It stays apparent, but ignored. And because of that, its importance grows even further. It disrupts conversation between otherwise polite people. It messes with the interaction of even the most loving couple. We resist uncomfortable interactions or facts because of fear. Not of someone physically hurting you generally, but of the way the conversation would shake our own comfort. So, as a response to this fear, we try to put it away. We forestall conversations. We overlook details. But the more attention we actively try to keep away from it, the more we are actually feeding into it. Because these problems, much like untreated infections, start to rot at our being, until there is no choice other than to address them. And by that point, they truly become elephants. 
all because of a fear of experiencing discomfort and addressing them in the start. All because of not accepting how things really are and not acknowledging the fact that they are significant enough to warrant. Or you resist not only persists, but will grow in size. According to Jung, the thing which causes the resistance towards acceptance is akin to a childlike attitude towards solving problems. That maybe if we resist them, they can simply go away. This desire to resist is itself a part of us. He says, in the period of youth, we meet in all cases with one particular feature, a more or less patent clinging to the childhood level of consciousness, a resistance to the faithful forces in and around us which would involve us in the world. Something in us wishes to remain a child, to be unconscious or, at most, conscious only of the ego, to reject everything strange or else subject it to our will, to do nothing or else indulge our own craving for pleasure or power. The influence of this thought, laid out by Jung, is immense in modern-day psychotherapy. The concept of accepting things as they are is a core foundation of therapies like dialectical behavior therapy and acceptance and commitment therapy. So the plan laid out by Jung about how to deal with such problems is a simple one. Accept it, acknowledge it, and act on it if you can, but do not try to forcefully look away. But here is another thing that you have to remember. Do not obsess over it either, because the fact that you are constantly thinking about it means you are not really accepting it. So let the pink elephant in. It's no fault of his that he exists, even if it is just in our minds. Just don't let him spread his pinkness everywhere, though. Uh-oh, I can see someone's mind going pink, though. <laughs>